Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fancy, and today I'm joined with Lucas, and we are going to be making a rankings for the Dynasty quarterbacks, the top 12 quarterbacks in our opinion. Now, before we start the video, I'd like to introduce Lucas. You can say anything you want here. Uh, what's up, guys? Uh, welcome back to our Dynasty uh, first run of Dynasty rankings for the 2020 year. Mm -hmm. It's going to be quite a fun time here. We're not going to get into too much fluff. We're just going to get straight into the video. So both me and Lucas have the exact same quarterback at the number one overall. And that is Patrick Mahomes, who is 24.5 years young out of the Kansas City Chiefs. Obviously, you guys know who he is. So they should not be that long of discussion. Why do you like Pat Mahomes? Why do you got him at number one over some other notable names? I mean, I, I feel like it's the only discussion I think against Mahomes is why you would put Lamar over him. That's kind of how I view it. Mm -hmm. uh, in sort of the dynasty world now because I think no one would have Mahomes less than two um, and I wouldn't argue with them if they had him at two but I think that offense is never going to get worse as long as Andy Reid's there um, they're only going to be building off they don't even have like a true wide receiver one uh, like a Sammy Watkins wide receiver that he's used a lot of gadget players Travis Kelsey's going to be there for a while mm -hmm. I mean it's, it's pretty I don't know. His value, I feel like, is pretty locked in. Nothing's really going to change for him in the future. Yeah, definitely. He's very safe. Uh, other guys, like, you know, you talked about Lamar Jackson. Uh, some people believe that he will eventually have injury problems because he runs the ball so much. Patrick Mahomes does not really do that. He finished his QB number six in 2019 and only played in 14 games, but he really only played in – 13 because he or because he got yeah, hurt but or... yeah but with that being said he threw 484 pass attempts 4,000 total passing yards 26 touchdowns at a 5.4 percent rate it's important to note the rating there number eight five total ints 15 interceptable passes 20th in the nfl and he ran the ball for over 200 yards and two total touchdowns now obviously pat mahomes is not going to be one of those guys that's going to use his legs a lot which is technically a downside in fantasy football especially if you're in a four point per passing touchdown league like i assume a lot of people are in I still think that Patrick Mahomes is without a doubt the number one quarterback for me like you said he's the most safe guy without a doubt to me there's no way that the Chiefs get any worse the Ravens they may be able to f figure out Lamar Jackson I don't think anyone's going to be able to figure out how to stop Pat Mahomes so you got anything else on him I think what well, you mentioned in the running game I think towards the end of the year obviously the playoffs um, he they started to use him in the run game or I don't know if that was they were actually calling plays or if it was more the O-line is breaking down I don't you can't we'll see coming into next year if they decide to add more RPOs or design design runs for him in the future. Yeah, I think that that Pat Mahomes this year was amazing. Like I said, he was QB number six. Last season he threw fifty touchdowns. How how is he gonna do that again? He probably will never do that again. But even without throwing 50 touchdowns he could throw 30 or 40 if he's healthy and he'll still be probably the number one or number two guy so I have a lot of confidence in him so now we're to move to number two guy we already kind of talked about him but that's Lamar Jackson now Lamar Jackson was the number one guy in 2019 everyone knows that he played out of this world he was amazing he, he played in just 15 games was still the quarterback number one 400 total pass attempts 26th in the NFL 3,127 passing yards 22nd at the quarterback position 36 total touchdowns a 9.0 percent rate that is very important to note. Number one in the NFL, six INTs, 14 interceptable passes. And this is where you get your money with Lamar Jackson. 175 carries first at the quarterback position. 1,213 rush yards first, 80.9 per game, and seven total rushing touchdowns second in the NFL at the quarterback position. Now, obviously, that rushing is why you draft Lamar Jackson. Do you think that Lamar Jackson could keep up that 36 passing touchdown rate? To an extent, yes. But I mean, I'm going to go back to that touchdown rate of the 9% because same thing happened with Mahomes last year. His is right around, I think, 7.5. And I'm not for sure, like, the exact benchmark stat. But every time it's over, I want to say, like, 7. Yeah, it's 7, it I think. Always comes back down roughly 2% or roughly back to 5%. And 5% is, I guess, the good, if you want to say, benchmark for quarterbacks. So Mahomes still had a great year last year. There's no way Lamar's going to keep 9%. I think if I had to kind of guess an average for the rest of his career, I'd say right around 4.5 to 5, just because, well, first off, the team likes to run the ball. They were 32nd in team pass plays, so I don't – I mean, like, they're just not going to throw the ball. They don't need to. Like, they have Lamar Jackson, Mark Ingram, and Harbaugh just likes to run. I, it's just – it's not – but the, the thing with it is you could say it's not going to happen, but then he could just run for 600 more yards. Very, exactly. Like it, that's why it's so hard to sort of project right now. And I think in the future we'll have sort of a better way to project it. But it's – you're not really making a case for Lamar. You're making a case against him, I think, is really the only way you can sign up lower his value. But he's going to be 
I would have to say a top five QB for the next five, 10 years easily if he just yeah. keeps running for what he is. 100%. If he doesn't get hurt, he will easily be one of, probably number one or number two every single year. I see no reason why he would even drop down, like you said, in the next couple of years. He's still very young. He's only 23.2 years old. That is very young for the quarterbacks. That is the second youngest on this list. So the next guy we're going to go on to here is Deshaun Watson, who's my third overall guy. Also, Lucas's third overall guy. But don't worry, guys. There's definitely going to be some differences later here. What do you like about Deshaun Watson? I like the fact that he puts up fantasy points and his team is terrible. I think that's kind of like – that's just what I think sort of locks him in. I don't say locks him in at the three, but he's always going to be in that top end. But I don't think he's ever going to be good enough to take over Mahomes and Lamar just because – Unless that team makes huge improvements in the next couple of years. Like, the offensive line is terrible. The receivers are – I mean, you got Hopkins and stuff. I mean, Will Fuller is always hurt. Mm-hmm. They just got Kenny Stills, and he underperforms. They never really have, like, that overall group. And they are a little bit run heavy. Um, but I think it's just – Watson's rushing – a little bit of rushing ability plus the, you could say, maybe negative game scriptness of the games he's in just kind of makes him – always fantasy relevant and he's only 24 so I think that's why you kind of have to keep him up there yeah definitely uh last season Deshaun Watson run the ball 82 times which is fourth amongst quarterbacks 413 rushing yards fourth amongst quarterbacks and seven total rushing touchdowns you've seen in multiple games where he uses his legs in order to win the Houston Texans the game like you said the Texans honestly are not that great of a team there will always be like a team that that can make the playoffs they're never going to win the fucking Super Bowl in my opinion with Bill O'Brien coaching the team but I think that Deshaun Watson will continue to be great he was quarterback number four in 2019 if he didn't get hurt a couple of years ago when he was a rookie he may have been the best quarterback in the league he was legitimately on fire before he got hurt in practice so I think that Deshaun Watson will continue to be a force to be reckoned with for fantasy football but uh real co- football maybe he's just about okay but what do you think I mean I think obviously with dynasty value it's I mean you're however long you're playing your league you got to look at that he's always going to have Hopkins there mm-hmm. O'Brien's a good enough coach during the normal like the whole season that they're going to be okay and I think the negative game script, I don't know like an exact correlation, but that I feel like that tends to help fantasy quarterbacks. I mean, like there's obviously like, um, I'm going to throw your Dolphins out here. The Dolphins fantasy quarterbacks obviously aren't the best sometimes because the negative game script. But like, I think there's definitely a trend with that. Um, mm-hmm. And they can only improve, I feel like. So I don't know. I think maybe eventually we'll have a couple other guys like my four and five above him and your, yeah, your four and five above him. But I think for now, Watson has to be the three. Yeah, definitely. Like we were talking about before with the the touchdown rate, Deshaun Watson was at a 5.3, so that's very yeah. normal. Like Mahomes was 5.4. So I think that Watson could easily do 5.3 yet again in 2020 and for the future. He is very young, like we said. And I think that if Bill O'Brien decides to figure out that he can dump the ball off to Duke Johnson, maybe he will get even more passing yards because those are just easy yards that the quarterback could acquire through that. Do you have anything else to say about Watson or should we move on? Move on. All right, so my fourth-ranked guy and Lucas's fifth-ranked guy, I believe, is Mr. Dak Prescott, 26.6 years old on the Dallas Cowboys. I believe that he is going to get whatever money they need to keep him there. Do you, do you believe that so as well? I, I'm hearing franchise tag becoming more of a thing, but that, that'll lead to a bigger contract next year. Yeah, 100%. I believe he is back for sure. I'm not sure if Amari Cooper is going to be back for sure or not, but I don't think that affects Dak at all, to me, at least. Like, I don't think that that means anything. In 2019, he was quarterback number two, 596 total passing attempts, which is sixth at the quarterback position, over 4,000 yards, second in the NFL, 30 passing touchdowns at a 5.0 rate, fourth in the NFL, 11 INTs, 26 interceptable passes, 52 carries, 277 rush yards, and three rushing touchdowns. One of those stats that really glares out to me is the three rushing touchdowns. He has ran three rushing touchdowns every single season he has been in the NFL I said it before last season I said he's gonna rush for three touchdowns because he just does it every single year I don't know how he figures that out but that offensive line is amazing if Dak Prescott continues to be a cowboy I see no reason why he can't continue to be a force to be reckoned with I got him at four I can see him being quarterback number two again next year if Mahomes or Watson was to get hurt yeah and I think like you said with the O-line that team is always just going to be ready to win I mean it's just the Cowboys America's team it's it's going to happen no matter what personnel they have or whatever. But Kellen Moore, I think, staying, mm-hmm. I think, is a huge boost for uh, Prescott in the future, obviously. Because that team took a huge jump in the passing 
uh, stats while still maintaining the rushing volume they always want to. Mm-hmm. With or without Amari Cooper, we'll see because – Gallup will slide in, but then who's going to slide into the two? It'll kind of have to play out. Mm-hmm. But that three rushing touchdowns and the 52 carries, uh, the 52 carries only turned into 277 yards, which is okay at yeah, best. Okay. I mean, it's not great, but as long as those, as long as you're getting those 52 carries, you're going to get some fantasy points some way, and then you're adding those three. But I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm going to project my three touchdowns too next year because we might as well. It's math there. Yeah, it's, it's so safe. So safe. Yeah. I, but no, I think. I mean, I have him at five. Um, we'll get into the next – or I'm at – yeah, five. We'll get into the next guy here. But I think there's not much between my three, four, and five for sure. Yeah, definitely not at all. I think McCarthy coming in there does kind of worry me. I'm not too sure about him. He's kind of one of those guys that I'm on some seasons in the past and then I'm off. He's kind of just so-so. But he, he can't be worse than Jason Garrett. So, I no. would assume they're going to be better now. Obviously, like you said, Amari Cooper – and I was talking about Amari Cooper could leave. But they, that could lead to them drafting a wide receiver in this draft. They maybe draft someone who is fast – as fuck to just for him to just throw the ball to. So I hope that they end up doing that, drafting a guy like Ruggs, anyone really who falls to them. So I don't really think there's too much more to talk about Dak if you're ready to move on. So my number five guy and his number four guy is Kyler Murray of the Arizona Cardinals, 22.6 years old, the youngest guy on this list. What do you think about Kyler Murray? The biggest part of me having him at four um, is, well, first off, the rushing ability. That's I mean, that's going to be consistent. But that team is only going to improve and it's a just a ton of things you got Kingsbury year two Murray in year two all of those receivers that drafted last year in year two Kirk's healthy the O-line that I'm not gonna say is going to get better but it should get better they have a lot of cap space they have a running back well obviously not now but they will have a running back with Kenyon Drake mm-hmm. or if they take another approach to free agency the just the air raid system in general favors fantasy points and if you're taking a quarterback that played in the air raid his whole year career in college and then now he can run the ball with still maintaining that same passing volume uh, it's it's just kind of a steal and I think with Kyler he's going up like the end of uh I'd say like on the turn of round one and two of super flex mocks and I found myself taking him quite a bit um I don't know, 22 years old, and you're going to get probably QB1 numbers this year, and then it's only going to improve. I just feel like that's a that's a good, very, very good value, and I don't know if it's going to rise um, up until the season because there is – obviously, you got your bigger names ahead of them. But, yeah, I'm, I really, really like Kyler. and I mean, you having him at five, there's not much difference there. Yeah, 100%. Now, the stats I want to talk about here, 93 carries third in the NFL, but if you were watching the games you were seeing at the beginning of the year, he was only running the ball ever so slightly. Then towards the end, he was like, fuck it, let me run. This offensive line is garbage. I'm going to die. So he decides to run 544 rushing yards, second in the NFL, and four total rushing touchdowns. So I think that those numbers could even go up even further, maybe near 120 carries next season, could be over 600 yards, maybe five, six touchdowns. No matter how many touchdowns he ends up scoring, I think he'll be very, very good. Now, talking about the passing touchdown rate he was at 3.7 last season which obviously is much less than ideal he threw 20 passing touchdowns 12 ints which isn't the best obviously but he was a rookie he will continue to get better and in this kingsbury system like you were talking about i think that murray who was quarterback number eight in 2019 could definitely move up to five or four potentially this season and i think with that 3.6 um you can kind of inverse it the way that the nine percent is going to drop down you can I don't want to say guarantee predict, but you can predict that that's going to rise up to that five, which obviously is only going to help them in fantasy points. And I'm assuming by next year, the first three weeks of the season, they won't kick like 20 field goals in the in the red zone. So, I mean, we'll see. It could happen, but things are only looking up for the Cardinals for sure. Yeah, I think their defense could also be better regard, making it so that they're not down by a million points and fucking he's heaving the ball yeah. down the field and he has no shot. He's like 5'6", yeah. so he can't really see some of these guys. But I think Kyler Murray is going to be amazing for the future. He's probably one of the brightest stars in the NFL, someone that a lot of people don't really talk about. I know us fantasy guys, we talk about Kyler Murray, but when you flip on ESPN, you don't really hear too much about him. I think that he's going to be a great player from now and on the future. Do you got anything else on him or can we move on? Move on. All right, my number six guy is Russell Wilson. Now, you have him at number seven. Obviously, that's very much not a difference at all. He is currently 31 
0.3 years old. He is not that old at all. He finished QB number three in 2019. He played every single game, 516 pass attempts, 12th in the NFL, 4,011 passing yards, 6th in the NFL, 31 passing touchdowns at a 6.0% rate, 3rd in the NFL, 5 INTs only, which is very good. And he also rushes the ball 75 times, 342 yards, and 3 total rushing touchdowns. What do you think about Russell Wilson? I mean, he's easily top three quarterback in the NFL just in terms of talent. I just think the situation that he um, is in with sort of the, uh, the offensive scheme isn't going to change anytime soon. So that just kind of limits him. We, and we see that with his sort of inconsistency of finishing like QB2 to like QB20, like every single year. Like it happens all the time. But he always finishes, I'd say, top seven in fantasy quarterbacks in redraft. Mm-hmm. So if most dynasty leagues are super flex, I mean, I love Russ in round one. You can't go wrong with it. 31, like you said. So he's probably going to play, I don't know what, seven more years, we'd think. Um, yeah. And he runs the ball, but not like a ton to where it's going to hurt on his, um, just his workload or his injuries, um, injury chances. But his team, uh, he was tied for first in sacks with two other teams. I don't remember the two other. So the oh, Cardinals. Are, as good as they kind of are, they obviously could use improvements. And that team really doesn't need a ton of improvements. So I think they will build off that in free agency and the draft. Yeah, definitely. Like you said, when you're talking about their scheme, they are going to run the ball a whole lot. So that is something to worry about. But it doesn't, it's not even really a worry because Russell Wilson's been in that yeah. his whole career and he still is out here producing. I think that he's going to be amazing for the next couple of years. Obviously, a decline may come maybe four or five years from now when he's getting up there in age. But even then, I still think he could have the potential to be a top 12 guy at 35 years old. I really like him. I think that he's going to continue to run the ball while not as much as a guy like Kyler Murray. I still think he's going to go out there and run the ball. He's still going to pass the ball. My one worry about him, why I got him down here, and potentially I could have moved him even lower is because he has. I think only once he has ever had two 1,000 – yard receivers on his team and that's kind of worrisome to me but I guess last year DK Metcalf and uh the other guy whose name escapes me Lockett they were at a thousand and nine hundred so pretty close so I think that Russell Wilson will be pretty good coming up do you do you have anything else about him okay I, I definitely think that Russell Wilson will be great now. Coming in here at number seven for me is his sixth overall guy. We kind of flip-flopped here. That is Josh Allen of the Buffalo Bills. Probably my favorite quarterback to watch aside from Lamar Jackson. He is very electrifying to watch. So what do you like about Josh Allen? He's probably my most owned dynasty quarterback. Um, and, I mean, that was a completely different topic. But that was just because everyone was kind of down on him last year. And the big thing, I think, just the way I kind of play is I like to target rushing quarterbacks, especially in Dynasty, just because obviously you're drafting him for the returned value. Even though, even if the team sucks, which it, I don't want to say the team sucked this year, but the team was pretty bad in mm-hmm. terms of the passing game. He was still a good fantasy quarterback just because he's running it. He was, without the outlandish stats Lamar put up, he probably had like pretty close to amazing rushing stats, but no, no one cares because it wasn't Lamar <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jackson. He was uh, 109 carries, which, I mean, Lamar's are designed carries. Josh Allen's, that offense is not far behind him in terms of how they run the, like, QB power, the read option or anything. Mm-hmm. And his receivers were Cole Beasley and John Brown. So I think that's where if they add a receiver, which it seems like they should, they I think should, it's yeah. just going to – the chances of improvement are better because his accuracy is not that great. He's not the, the greatest accuracy thrower. But mm-hmm. we saw bits and flashes here and there that – it could be improvement or he could maybe unlock that ceiling that I think he does have. So I think he's a great um, just target in general in redraft and in dynasty. And he's only 23 years old. So he's going to be playing for a long time there. Yeah, definitely. You said he did run the ball a lot, 109 carries. He had nine total rushing touchdowns, which is the best at the quarterback position. So you can't really ask for much more from Josh Allen. Quarterback number seven on the year in 16 games. He got absolutely laid out against the Patriots. It seemed like he was dead, but he somehow got back up and played in the next game so he had 461 total pass attempts which is not even that high at all in the NFL 21st overall 3,089 passing yards 23rd overall 20 passing touchdowns at a 4.3 percent rate nine INTs 15 of those were potentially interceptable 20th in the NFL so his stats don't scream the most amazing quarterback I don't think he will ever be a super amazing quarterback but you don't have to be the best quarterback in the NFL to be the best fantasy football quarterback in the slightest like you said you can run the ball a million times you can just pass it he, throw, he uses the Jameis system, except for he just doesn't throw it to the other team. He throws yeah. it like 
six yards over the guy. So yeah. that's even better for fantasy. So I love Josh Allen here. I think that Josh Allen will be a guy that's always going to be undervalued because no one likes the Bills. No one wants to talk about how the Bills have been a playoff team the last couple of years. They're a team that could definitely make the playoffs again this year. And if they bring in a wide receiver, like you said, that will bode very well for Josh Allen. Uh, their new coach seems to be pretty good for them. So you got anything else on Josh? Nope. Okay, so the next guy here in my rankings is Mr. Famous Jameis Winston, the W Eater, at number eight. You have him as well oh, yeah. at number eight. So originally I had his team as the Buccaneers, and yours just says, uh-oh, and I changed mine to a question mark because I'm not sure where the fuck Jameis Winston is going to be. As of a couple of days ago, I would have told you he's coming back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But right now, I'm about as confused as it gets about Jameis Winston, where I think he should land if he wants to score a lot of fantasy points is the L.A. Chargers. If he somehow gets to play there, he has similar weapons there. Obviously, um, what's his name? Mike Williams is nowhere near as good as a guy like Godwin, but I think Keenan Allen could be very good for him. What do you think happens with Jameis Winston? Where do you see him going, and do you think he'll be good if he moves? Well, these whole free agency quarterback rumors just make no sense to me. And not even like fantasy, but like why would the Bucs sign like a Phillip Rivers (laughs) – who's, what, 12 years older than him and mm-hmm. sucks and is worse than Jameis Winston, wait two years and be in a complete rebuild. I think we talked about that with the receivers, um, uh-huh. whatever, two days ago, three days ago. So I, I think he returns. Uh, I don't know if it'll be on tag or what. I I don't know. I just don't – Arians <laughs> is not stupid. So I, I don't see him, like, unless they're going to draft one or get maybe, like, Bridgewater, there's no way they're just going to – like let Winston walk, who just threw for five thousand yards, mm-hmm. and then sign of Philip Rivers, who was going to do completely worse in that offense. Um, I actually just got Winston in the seventh round in an actual startup too, which is pretty Amazing. crazy. Super flex. Um, to me, it's just people. I don't know. They don't give enough credit. I, I get he throws thirty interceptions, but he threw for five thousand yards. The Bucks defense allowed the fourth most points per game in the NFL. Obviously, like we said, that creates negative game scripts. Not for sure the direct correlation to, like, if that helps or doesn't help or whatever. I mean, I'm sure it depends. Supporting cast efficiency, which is quarter or receivers, running backs, tight ends, was sixth. Obviously, you had Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, bits and pieces of O.J. Howard and Cameron Braid, a little bit of Ronald Jones. So, it wasn't like it was an awful offense. His protect, protection rate was 20th in the NFL. Obviously, O-line's a big need for them, which I think they should address at the pick they have, which I think is – around 10 if I remember right around there somewhere and then his accuracy rating was 31st so that's where it gets kind of weird because his other passing stats were okay obviously very inaccurate 30 interceptions but I don't know even even if he goes back to Tampa Bay and doesn't improve um what did he finish as his quarterback last year quarterback five so yeah so you're going to take quarterback five in the seventh round of a dynasty startup like I mean like I don't know like it's just I don't get sort of the pushback on Jameis because even if he goes to the Chargers I think that'd be a better situation it could be in terms of like his overall like what he could put up in fantasy just because that team is better that defense is better they should have a running back Mm -hmm. an actual tight end and two I don't know it's just I'm gonna keep him an eight and I think the highest I could put him though is seven I maybe swap him and Russ but I can't put him much higher than Josh Allen and Dak Okay, so Jameis threw last season, he threw 626 pass attempts. Obviously, based on all the numbers I've read to you, that's number one overall. 5,000 passing yards, number one overall. 33 passing touchdowns, number two overall. 30 INTs, that has to be the best overall or the worst. Best or worst, depending how you're looking at it. 49 interceptable passes. So that's that's kind of bad, but it's okay. He ran the ball a couple of times. That's okay as well. But I think that Jameis Winston will continue to be amazing for fantasy purposes. I said it for Josh Allen. This man literally heaves the ball anywhere. He doesn't care what color uniform you're wearing. He doesn't care if you're the ref, the fans. He throws it to everyone. He loves to heave the ball. And I think with that LASIK, maybe that, maybe just maybe he can finally see correctly. They're getting new uniforms. Maybe he can see those uniforms better. Maybe that's why they got him. I like Jameis Winston. For the future, I think he has the potential. He could be – if he figured out how not to throw picks, I think he could be the number one overall guy, to be honest. Oh, yeah, with. for sure. I, and I think a lot of it matters, obviously, on the team. The defense sucks. They throw the ball more. But, I mean, even if that regresses a little bit and his interceptions uh, regress, but in a good way, they just go down. Yeah. I don't know. It's just – he's kind of like the – how quarterbacks that run or a cheat code. He's kind of like that – just like passing cheat code. It always end, ends up working maybe like one bad game here or there, but he's normally fine uh, top 12 most of the time. 
Yeah, definitely. He will have those games, though, where he completely screws you over. But then he has yeah. those other games where he's literally balling out of control and you won because you have him. So I think that if you can get him in the seventh round and you draft Godwin in the first or second round of your draft, you are, you're riding clean for the next couple of years as long as they keep Jameis. I love Jameis. Bruce Arians, don't be an idiot. Bring him back. All right. All right, now our ne- my next guy here is Baker Mayfield, Mr. Progressive on your TV all the time of the Cleveland Browns. He is, I believe, right here, 24.9 years old. He is number nine for me, number 11 for you. Now, obviously, that's not too much of a disparity. Maybe it is to you, to me, not really. I like Baker Mayfield a decent amount. What do you, th- what do you say about him? I mean, there's a ton. I think we could kind of pick apart with him. I think there's still the big – no matter what you say, no matter what you break down, where you look, there's still like a question mark that I think no one will have the answer to on why the team didn't really work um, last year. I kind of looked at it like from an offensive line perspective because that was a big issue if you watch the games. His protection rate was 30th and his clean pocket completion percentage was 35th. So not even in the top 32 quarterbacks, mm-hmm. um, not even in an NFL starting quarterback <laughs> range. And it was just, I don't know, because like his other stats, like I don't know if you went super in depth on like, if you really looked at the player profiler page, they weren't bad. I mean, yeah. he was okay under pressure. He didn't play awful. And it was just, there's something we're missing that I don't know if we're ever going to find out what it is, but obviously it's clean slate. You're doing startups startups. Now Kevin Stefanski is the OC. And I was trying to look into maybe how that's going to play out. Cause I think I will do more research on coaching changes. And I really couldn't find anything. Um, the, I don't know, like it stuck out. His run pass, pass run splits in 2018 passes 64% of the time. 2019, obviously in the Vikings, uh, it was only 51%. So they really can't. They're going to run a lot, I think, this season, if I'm being honest. I think they run a lot. Yeah. I mean, obviously they have Dalvin Cook. But he's kind of sliding into that similar offensive style, a pocket passing QB, running back Dalvin Cook, Nick Chubb. And then his two receivers, um, Diggs, Thielen, and then OBJ and Landry. So it's just kind of – it'll be interesting to see kind of the route they take. Um, I think free agency in the draft will be huge for them if they can get like a Werfs. They're at pick 10, actually. Mm-hmm. If they, they can get like Werfs, Becton, Thomas. Like they're going to get someone, I think, to help their own line. But then it'll be interesting to see what they do with OB, OBJ. I think Landry's having surgery. Apparently, I found out like last week. I must yeah, have missed that. So I don't really know what's going to be happening there. But he's still super young, 24, and we saw flashes of greatness, I think. So I have him at 11. You have him at 9. But mm-hmm. I think it's just a big tier at the bottom there. Yeah, to me, he's probably the the most scary guy I have ranked so far, obviously. To me, he could he could be a complete bust to me, but he could also be great. Like, he's shown flashes of being good. Like you said, he was quarterback number 19 on last season. Nowhere near where you drafted him. People were drafting him to be the quarterback the number five. five. Yeah. And you know what he did? He fucked you in the ass. He's number 19, 500. 34 pass attempts, which was 10th in the NFL, so not too shabby for that. Almost 4,000 passing yards, 22 touchdowns, but where it came down for him was 21 INTs, 29 interceptable passes, 28 carries, 141 rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns, and he had a 4.1% passing touchdown rate. So obviously, none of these stats really call out to you being that good aside from his his passing yards and the amount of times he's going to pass the ball. But I think that goes down the amount of times he passes the ball, but that could mean he could be making better decisions. The Browns may just be a cursed organization and he yeah. may never be good. That is entirely something that is a worry to me. He could just, they could just be cursed, but I hope that they're not. I hope that he is good next year. And for the future, like you said, he's young. So that's really the thing that I'm going to try to plant the flag on the fact that he's young and that he could get better. Yeah. And it's, I don't want to say it can't get worse. I could definitely think that it could just fall apart. But even if he's your QB too, I think you'll be okay for the future with tons of years of improvement. Mm-hmm, definitely. Now to pivot to my number 10 guy who Lucas does not even have ranked and a guy that I actually hate personally. I do not like this guy. His name is Carson Wentz, 27.2 years old of the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, why is he number 10? to me, is because I think he has the potential to be great. We've seen a few seasons ago, he was amazing. Last season, quarterback number 10 with the wide receivers of a JV football team. So he could obviously get much better than that. But the biggest worry to me is I don't trust him. I don't trust his injury history. He seems like every season, last season he played 16 games. Sure, that's amazing. But the last couple of years, he seems to just always end up getting hurt. So that's a huge worry for me. Why do you not have Carson Wentz ranked inside your top 12? I mean, you said he was QB10 last year. That was with the lack of wide receiver weapons. But even I think the route I take is even with, say, they get X receiver. Say 
rugs or whatever. I don't know. So they Jefferson. The, yeah, they addressed the, the situation, the gap in the offense. I don't think he can come higher than 10. Um, just the way the Eagles are, they're always going to have a running back by committee. They're always going to be a defensive team that just slows the game down. And I think I sort of rank my other guys – just kind of off the upside, I see that it can be higher than Wentz, I guess. I mean, I think I'd have Wentz at 13 or 14, so it's not a huge drop. He's just not a good fantasy quarterback in general. Like, he had that one good MVP run, but that team was stacked. The oh, team is not stacked by any means. They have Jeffrey, who's going to retire soon. Jackson should retire. Our Sega Whiteside sucks. They – tight ends, like, I don't know. It's just – the team is just a good football team and not a good fantasy team. Um, I don't think they really ever will be in the future. Yeah, I can agree with that. The reason why I don't like him is, like I said, the injury history. And I personally still still stand tall on the fact that I believe that Nick Foles is better than him. That's, I'll, that'll just always be my belief. In 16 yeah. games he played in 2019, 600 pass attempts, fifth in the NFL, 4,039 passing yards, ninth in the NFL, seven INTs, 25 interceptable passes, and he ran the ball – a bit, nothing really notable, 243 rush yards, one rushing touchdown, 62 carries. So to me, Carson Wentz, like you said, I think I actually think there is potential for him to get better than 10. I could see him being like a top eight, maybe top six kind of a guy. But yeah. that injury history and that injury concern literally strays me so far away from him. And just the fact that he's on the Eagles, because the Eagles could be either great next year or terrible. You never know. The, the NFC East is the most confusing division ever. Besides the Cowboys, I would say, they're always typically pretty good. Any yeah. of those other teams, like the Redskins, magically could be the second best team, and that wouldn't even surprise me. So I don't really know what to do with Wentz. I, I have him ranked here because I think that you should pick him as the 10th best quarterback, but you wouldn't catch me anywhere leaving the draft with Carson Wentz. Yeah, so I was going to ask, like, to gauge your interest, if you're getting him at, like, QB 10, would you take him in a startup? Like, I, that's what I was going to ask. But. No, I, w- I would rather take a shot on someone else, but I think that mm. he, he will be fine. Like, he'll be a fine quarterback, but he will never turn into that guy. Like, a guy, Josh Allen could turn into someone amazing. Dak Prescott could be amazing, but I don't think that Carson Wentz will ever be amazing. Yeah, the, the path is just very unclear. And not because they don't have anyone right now, but they've just never had that, like, like Michael Vick era or whatever, but like they've never had that dominant offense in the past. Uh, uh-huh. They just rely on defense too much. Yeah, and you brought it up before. They use that running back by committee, which obviously we're not going to talk about this year. I don't understand how anyone likes Miles Sanders in Dynasty. No, it's, we'll talk about that in the running back. Rank yeah, that there. is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. But we can pivot off of Carson Wentz here if you are ready. So we are going yeah. to go to Mr. My number 11. We are going to go with Jared Goff of the LA Rams. You got him at number nine. He is 25.4 years old. What are you thinking about the team that had the biggest Super Bowl like <laughs> hangover I've ever seen in my life? What do you think about them? Um, I think the team... I think they just got cocky last year, personally. I think that's just kind of what happened. I think they thought they didn't make any improvements. Uh, they never addressed Gurley's running back. Uh, running back. His injury situation, like, not addressed it, but they never, like, said what happened. Like, if they just would have came clean and put him through rehab, they, we, I think Gurley, I don't know if he would have played last year, but there never would have been this, like, I mean, I don't know. I know where I have Gurley ranked in running back rankings, but everyone has him probably 10 or lower and he was like number two last year so I mean it's they just kind of screwed up the way they approached it last year mm-hmm. um the team got banged up really bad they decided to switch to a tight end focused offense <laughs> in the middle of the season which I mean it worked first, they started getting yeah there. exactly so I think they will take that going forward because I do think it worked I think McVay is a good, smart enough offensive coach to go on the run with that and then now know that that's what they need to do um Cooks is going to stay Everyone says he's going to get traded. Their team's going to trade for a 26-year-old concussion receiver, and he's like a $13 million cap hit. Mm-hmm. So all their guys are going to be coming back. I don't. They don't have any draft picks for the next, like, 20 years because they said Jalen Ramsey was a good idea to go get. Um, uh-huh. But they're, the, they're only going to improve. And if you see – I don't know. Like, Goff is still good. What he finishes his QB last year? 13. 13. Pretty good. And there was that five-week – before the tight ends where it was just it was just gross but I don't know I just I think I like Goff in the future to I don't know I want to say I don't want to say Super Bowl contenders because I mean I don't really know they have a good defense now but I think it'll be playoff caliber football from here on out from them yeah definitely I think it is very funny though going back to McVay how two years ago when they're in the playoffs they're playing good everyone's riding McVay and now you hear nothing about Sean McVay it's like yeah. he fell off the earth but he's still probably one of the best coaches yeah he's in easily the smart, one of the best 
smartest coaches in the league. Yeah, 100%. Now, obviously, you brought up Todd Gurley. He'll never be okay again. He, he has that knee arthritis. He's like your grandfather or something. I don't understand it. I don't understand. Him and Sony Michelle, I will never touch in fantasy football. I don't know why anyone likes them. But he, the reason why I think a lot of people are off of Jared Goff is he finished quarterback number 13. That's okay. But where he was being drafted, they, the Rams paid him so much money that that personally made me believe. You're going to pay this guy a lot of money? He will be good. Apparently, money doesn't correlate to fantasy football points. Who would have known? But I think that last season, he was he was just a safe quarterback towards the end of the season, like you said, when they converted to using more tight ends because Cooks is just you, – you brought it up. That guy is, is garbage because he's just going to get hurt every single year. Mm. So Jared Goff, 626 pass attempts, number one in the NFL, 4,643 pass yards, number three, 16 INTs, and 28 interceptable passes, 27th, and he's not a running quarterback at all, so there's no reason to even say his stats, two rushing no touchdowns but Jared Goff's just going to be an okay guy he's going to be one of those guys that's going to finish from the 12 pro- or the 10 to 15 probably for the next five years I would assume yeah I would agree so he's just very safe so there's not really much to talk about with him in my opinion I like him but I would not like just try to go out there and go get him in every single no, week because no. he, d- he is young though that is probably his biggest plus so the next guy here my number 12 guy is Maddie Ice Matt Ryan Lucas has him ranked at number 10, 34.8 years old. So he is the oldest man ranked on here. What do you think about old man Matty Ice? Well, I think people are probably like, why does he have him at 10? It's not that I'm going to be drafting him as the 10th quarterback. I just think that the remaining value, like the dynasty value that he would have left, um, is going to be better than what you could. I mean, like, I don't know. Like, it's, He'll put up good enough numbers, I think, to be that number 10 quarterback for the next four or five, whatever he plays, four or five years. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to be there because he's on contract, second or third highest quarterback contract. I don't remember what it is, but the team is in kind of a win-now mode. I've been mentioning that the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. They're in no place to rebuild just due to cap space um, issues. And there's the whole every other year. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. Yeah, it's just – I mean, it's true because it happens, but I think there's just more to it. The team always seems to be injured the last two years. He was obviously injured last year. Mm-hmm. They went through a phase of where Austin Hooper was good, got hurt. They shipped off some new. Ridley was hurt. Julio sat out a couple games. Uh-huh. I don't know. But then when you get that all together, hopefully not Devontae Freeman at running back. Hopefully like Cam Akers or J.K. Dobbins or mm-hmm. anyone. I don't know, anyone better than freaking Freeman. I think that he'll at least be – he has to be at least a low-end QB one. I don't think you can drop him lower than that. Yeah, 100%. He was quarterback number 11 in 2019. He played 15 games, kind of 15 games. He got hurt in one of them. 616 pass attempts, third in the NFL, 4,466 passing yards, fifth in the NFL, 14 INTs, 16 interceptable passes, and he's not a rushing quarterback either. No need to really – 150 rush yards, one touchdown, nothing to write home about, but he's not a snail. He's, he's going to run the ball unlike Tom Brady, but – I think that Matt Ryan is just going to be safe, like you said. Julio Jones should be there. How many years do you think? Maybe three more years? Yeah, I'd say you're right about where Matt Ryan's going to be. Yeah, they'll probably ride off into the sunset together, having lost the Super Bowl to the Patriots. Yeah. The most embarrassing loss ever. I like Matt Ryan. I think he's going to be safe. You said that every other year thing. I strongly believe that. It's just factual information. You look, he's hot, he's cold, but his cold is QB 11. So, I mean, like, how mad yeah, could, like- could you be with that? Yeah, I mean, and what do you know what his ADP was going into last year? I have no idea. He was not even that highly regarded, but a lot seven of people or, seven or eight maybe. Uh, yeah, but a lot of people regarded him as the best. I I seem to believe someone I know. Oh like gosh, Matt Ryan I don't I mean, talk about it. I had a, I did a whole in depth thing with him, and it just backfired on me. It's okay. He backfired on many people. Now we're gonna pivot off of him, unless you got anything else to say. <laughs> no, we're gonna we're gonna move on. We're going to move on to, well, my number 12, he's gone. So we're going moving on to Lucas's number 12 guy, the final guy of the video. If you guys have enjoyed thus far, I forgot to fucking say this earlier. Click that subscribe button. Check out Lucas as well. We got our guy, Horsecock Drew Locke, 22.3 years old, rookie last season, sophomore this season. What are you thinking as a Denver fan? Well, um, kind of like Corton Sutton, a little bit biased. I think this one has a little more bias than that one because Sutton, <laughs> I think, actually is pretty close to top 12. Um this one's basic. This is just a huge ceiling play with Locke, I think. I think that we saw what he needed to last year. The team is only improving that he's got A.J. Bouye for a fourth-round pick yesterday. Or for two days ago. And like, yeah, it's crazy. They And we can probably talk about that in a whole different thing. There's a lot of implications with that, more so than just getting Bouye. But this team is only improving. They, 
uh, shoot, offensive coordinator, Shermer. No, I think he knows how to run an offense. He just didn't know how to be a head coach in uh, New York. The team, I don't know, the John Elway's a good quarterback uh, whisperer, I guess you could say. He got Manning in there. He did okay with Osweiler. I don't know. It's just kind of, I mean, it is kind of a homer call, but I think that the ceiling is definitely there for him. Um, the floor is kind of scary just because the team likes to sort of run the ball. And now they're looking for a running back. I saw, yeah. yes. I don't, Who's Royce Freeman? Who's that guy? I don't know. Well, he's, uh, he's, he, mm, I don't know. I'm not, I have mixed emotions on him because like he is okay, but like I'd rather have like JK Dobbins or someone. They had an interview with him, so I'm pretty cool. But I think that the Broncos are kind of coming back into their own sort of what they are. And I think that we saw Drew Locke's uh, swagger, if you want to call it, when he's on the sidelines singing and all that stuff as a 21 year old guy, just, I don't know, just having fun. So I think it'll be interesting to see what he can kind of unlock um, this coming year and in the future. And he, He's going pretty late. I don't have his exact ADP. I probably should. Yeah, he goes very. Up. He goes very late. And it's people just aren't bought in yet. And if you, wherever his ADP is, if you buy in and it clicks, like cool. Like I mean, if not, whatever. Just drop him and get a new quarterback. But I think he's definitely worth a shot in uh, whatever his ADP is in your startups for sure. Yeah, one hundred percent. Now I brought up earlier Kyler Murray is the youngest guy. I fucking lied straight to your face. Drew Locke is the youngest <laughs> right. guy. So, yeah, 22.3, Kyler 22.6. Very similar, though. So, at the end of the day, I think Drew Locke is going to be pretty good. I would not have him inside the top 12 to me. That is a bit ambitious, maybe 14, 15. But that's still good. That That's nothing oh, yeah. wrong against him. He's young. He could still get much better. He is in a in a, on a team that has some solid weapons on the offense. They have a good defense. So, you think that Drew Locke will be able to figure it out and play very good. I mean, he, he pretty much did figure it out towards the end of the year when they let him run. Mm-hmm. I exactly. think that uh, hopefully this season could be Drew Locke's here. You got anything else about Drew Locke or are we over here? No, nah, nope. He's a good guy. He's a good nope. guy. Okay. Horse cock Drew Locke, baby. So thank you guys all for watching this video. Lucas, if you'd like to say anything, you could say it now. Uh, no, just go to my Twitter. Follow me down below. We have – we'll be keeping in videos and stuff going forward, so they'll see yeah. me enough. Yeah, he'll be back next week for some other videos. So thank you guys all for watching. I love you all. Click on one of the videos that's on the screen. Click that subscribe button. Click on my Twitter because I need to hit over 200. Yeah. Followers. I have 3,000 YouTube subscribers, 170 followers. Like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Click that button. I love you all. Goodbye.